Ladies, gentlemen, those of you of unspecified gender, tonight we're gonna make another painting. Now, if you watched the last episode, you'll remember that I said, and go ahead and join us next time. I already got the canvas prepped. I started toning that canvas with the excess paint left over from the pellet from this painting. And tomorrow we're gonna do something military themed. And I'm just gonna fucking talk about PTSD and bitch moan and complain the entire time. And what do you know? Our canvas is already done. Look at the waves and the ridges on this motherfucker. This is 3D as shit. Because, like tonight's subject matter, we're gonna be doing something you can fucking feel. That's right, we're talking about post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. Let's get into it. Now, as you can see, our canvas is on the easel, and it's a sturdy easel. So I named it Vin, Vin Diesel. Anyway, today we're gonna be painting this portrait of me. If I remember right, it was in Djibouti. And then we're doing this on the, like, the PTSD fucking depression thing. I don't have any good pictures of me from Afghanistan, so we're gonna go with this and just pretend. Now, all I'm gonna do is take it in the Photoshop and slap a skull on it, and then we're gonna run it through the projector, and then boom, we got our image to trace. See, I put myself in a boonie cover, because boonie covers are cool. All right, so if you've been paying attention to my other videos, my other lessons, you'll know that the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take the area where the subject is in the image, and we're gonna paint that a really, really dark purple to complement the background color on this. We're gonna take two different purples, and then we're gonna mix it with black. Now, with the projector where it is, and with the lights out, we're just gonna paint the outline with the lines out at first. Also, hey, here's some music for while we paint. <laughs> and fill in the rest. Now again with this, we're not going to put too much pressure on the canvas. We're going to take the bristles and just let them surf over the waves and the ridges of this canvas. And then what we're going to do down here at the bottom is we're going to have paint on the brush and we're going to stick it on the edge of the outline, but then we're going to drag it down. So you kind of get like this effect. And then we're going to fill it in from there so it kind of looks like he's fading up out of the ether. All right, now take a look at this just a little bit closer. You see how the downstrokes left a bunch of this area in there and it almost looks like brain matter special effects from an 80s B movie. That's what we're trying to get here because PTSD and depression are both mental things. Get it, mental brain. It's, it's this very meta transfusion from what's going on in your brain housing group onto the fucking canvas. Now while this dries, let's go do something else. Now before we go any further with this, I think there is one thing that we do need to address. Jameson, sponsor me, man. Fuck. What do I have to fucking do? Fucking Coors is going to come after me and you're going to be fucking jealous that they got me and you didn't. I also do think that it's funny that one of the few remaining acceptable prejudices in America is hating Irish people. Well, I don't, all right? I don't make jokes about drunk dock workers, except for to say that my sister can drink more than they can. All right, well, while Ireland is getting their knives out, let's look at some of the symptoms of PTSD. One of them is the inability to remember any important aspects of the traumatic events. I actually don't really remember Afghanistan that much. Like, there's a few spots, like, here and there. Eh, most of that's just fucking gone. Hell, if you want to get into it, I have a lot of dreams about Iraq. I've never been to Iraq. And all the dreams that I've had about Afghanistan I've had while I was in Afghanistan. So if you haven't been there, there's this thing called a piss tube. It's a tube you put in the ground and you pee in it because you don't have plumbing. Anyway, one night I got up in the middle of the night and I walked out of the piss tube because I really had to take a piss. And I I'm standing there draining the lizard and this unicorn walks up behind me on his hind legs, you know, walking like all bipedal and shit. And what I thought was, man, I have not seen this guy in a while. And I look at him and say, hey man, what's up? And the unicorn looks at me and tells me to wake up. And then I wake up in my cot just covered in my own piss. I remember that kind of shit, but not a whole lot else. Like hell, there's this one time one of my friends posted these pictures on Facebook and there were pictures of the shit that happened after this firefight. And everybody's all fucked up, the trucks were all destroyed and shit. And I comment, man, I'm glad I wasn't there for that. And then he replies, you took the photos, dumbass. Whoops. Another one of the symptoms of PTSD is persistent fear, horror, anger, guilt, or shame. Now, I don't really have any of that, except for maybe the anger. I got this thing where if my dog starts barking within like five feet of me, I get down and bark at her back. Like she'll be like, oh! And I'll be like, shut the fuck up! 
I don't like loud noises, all right? Unless it's metal. That's and with humans. I mean, other people. I'm human. I understand that humans are flawed, stupid creatures, so I tend not to get super mad at them for every little thing. On the other hand, if my computer decides it doesn't want to work, it's like, bitch, do the thing you were built to fucking do. Work, goddammit! I'm kind of surprised that my voice isn't deeper from all the screaming that I do. Another symptom they have, diminished interest or participation in significant activities. Yeah, they're right about that. I don't give a fuck about anything. And I don't, I don't mean that like in a bad way. You know, like, like I love my wife, I like my house, I appreciate my dogs, my sister's cool. I, I, have a, I have a group of friends that I love. Other than that though, like fucking what's the worst that's gonna happen? Like, oh my God, shit's not going good at work. What are they gonna do? Shave my head and send me to Afghanistan? I already been through the hard shit. You're not, you're not, you're not doing worse than that. Oh God, watch me get some fucking disease soon enough to eat those words. The other symptom that they have on here, persistent and exaggerated negative beliefs or expectations expectations about oneself, others, or the world. Negative beliefs about the world are just accurate, all right? Like, big picture speaking, nothing matters. Now, something might matter to you, stuff might matter to me, but eventually the sun's gonna explode and we're gonna experience the heat death of the universe. Or a comet might hit us. Or aliens could show up and fucking nuke us. And by nuke, I don't mean like use nuclear weapons on us, I mean like soil like grain put us in a fucking microwave and eat us nuke. But yeah, negative beliefs and expectations, that's an absolute fucking kicker. And it is really easy to get down that rabbit hole of thought that no one cares about you or the work that you do, especially if you're trying to do anything in social media or like in the creative world. Like you'll spend hours, days, weeks, months on something and then you'll post it up and then like it'll just get zero fucking response. Now that's not because you don't have friends. It's because you're putting out a subpar product and your friends don't like you enough to share it anyway. And neither them or your family believe in you enough to openly support you. Hell, in fact, you're so unpopular with your little group that a multi-billion dollar company stole your fucking ideas. And then when you complained about it, they went with the assholes that stole your shit instead of supporting you. Let's get back to painting. All right, so for this next little gambit, we're gonna take the two dark purples that we had. We're gonna pour them right on top of that black mess we left in the palette. And again, with this stage, we're just gonna go over the broad shapes of what's in the image, just to start giving it tone. We're not really gonna go for too much depth right now, just tone, follow me. Now we're gonna remember that when we got this far down here, that we were doing that downstroke thing. We're gonna keep in line with that while we're down here. And let's go ahead and turn the lights off for that. All right, so do you see where we're at here? We're just making shapes right now. And then we come back later after this dries, we'll be able to start adding a little bit of the cool stuff. And while this tries, let's go look at some of my other art that I've done recently, but haven't made videos about. Actually, I decided that I want to talk about something else because it got brought to my mind. I'm just going to put some of my other recent art here. Most of it's for sale. Check the fucking website. But anyway, why does it seem the people that are like over concerned about these types of things aren't the people that you want to be talking to about it? Like when I was in 29 Palms, fucking, I would go outside during the sunset and smoke a cigarette and watch the sunset because the sunset in 29 Palms is fucking beautiful, man. And I'm sitting there looking at the sun, looking at the horizon, looking at the landscape and just minding my own fucking business. And this fucking idiot comes up to me and he's like, man, you look like you're deep in thought. And I'm like, uh, yeah, man. And this guy's like, well, I mean, do, do, do you got something you need to talk about or anything with anybody? You, you look kind of, you know, I don't know, wacky out here, you know, just like staring at the sunset. Why can't I just look at a fucking sunset? But I say to him, yeah, no, no, dude, I'm good. So like a minute or two passes and he's like, are you sure, man? Like, it looks like you got something on your mind. So I tell him, what do you think would have happened if Paris gave that apple to anybody besides Aphrodite? Because he gave that apple to Aphrodite and she gave him Helen. And he took Helen back to Troy. And the Greeks went and sacked Troy. And if that never happened, then the Trojans wouldn't have left their fleeing city and founded Rome. And if Rome was never founded, they wouldn't have gone to war against Carthage. And if they didn't go to war against Carthage, they wouldn't have became the dominant superpower in the Mediterranean. And who knows if the Carthaginians would have killed Jesus. And if the Carthaginians didn't kill Jesus, we wouldn't get Christianity. And if we didn't get Christianity, Christianity, the entire geopolitical climate of Europe would have been changed 2,000 fucking years ago. Would they have even found America? Would the Russians have got to the moon first? Would there be a Russia? Without a strong Rome, would the Vikings have been able to plunder Europe the way that they did? What about Genghis Khan? Let me enjoy my fucking sunset. Let's get back to painting. All right, so this time we're gonna go back in, except for we're gonna do it with a brighter purple and a fluorescent blue. And we're gonna put those in the same inkwell because we want there to be a little bit of cross-contamination. Lights up.
Now on the teeth, you remember that thing we did down at the bottom where we had paint on the bottom of the brush and brush down and let it run out? We're going to do that here on the teeth and do come back later with a smaller brush to like fix that in its gnarliness. All right, now let's turn the lights on and go back over it with a good eye. Now, remember how we made those shapes earlier? That's helping us with where we're putting shit now. All right, now look at the gnarliness of this. Now see down here between these like spider webby wave things, that's where you wanna pay attention to what we're doing. That light brush work we were doing, it'll give us paint on top of the ridge, but not so much under it. Gives it a cool effect. Also the fucking furnace is on, so I guess we'll have to do this next part somewhere else where the sound is a little bit clearer. Now disassociation and depression get rolled up in PTSD. And you know, that, that makes me think of something that I find sad about other veterans. And like before I go on to this, like it's okay to be proud of your service, but if you base your entire personality off of four years of early adulthood, like up into your 40s, get a fucking life. Personal development isn't supposed to stop when you EAS. Like that's one of the reasons I'm trying to disassociate myself with the veterans community. I don't want to be associated with all you bro vet assholes. I mean, shit, 90% of the veterans community is just dudes shitting on other fucking dudes because a job you had 15 fucking years ago is harder than theirs. No one cares what branch or MOS you were except for like other fucking veterans that want to shit on you on the internet. And then like dudes, starting a t-shirt company and doing push-ups does nothing for veteran suicide or any type of fucking mental health. Also, calling people fucking civilians is cringe as shit. Like, you're out. You're a civilian too. And that German shepherd you have doesn't make up for your shit personality. Hey, G.I. Karen, being the loudest fucking person in the room doesn't make you right. You're not a fucking expert on foreign affairs just because you went to Kuwait twice. By the way, alcoholism isn't a fucking personality either, all right? See what you did, Jameson? Now Kors is here. Kors, give me money to drink on camera. Dude, I would love to see a fucking veteran TikTok where all they did was make bread all day. And no, that wasn't a getting baked joke. No one cares that you smoke pot. Shit, it's your fault that these kids make stupid fucking TikTok videos about you. You're nothing but a walking parody of yourself. A fucking joke of fucking mangled together broken promises and failure. Like, just look at the fucking people you emulate. Black Rifle Coffee isn't any better than Folgers. You just want to suck Matt Best's dick because you have this like fucking daydream fantasy of going on fucking Joe Rogan with him. Let's get back to painting. Okay, so we're at our second to last stop with this guy and we're going to be using our fluorescent blue and our neon pink. And we're going to go in and start doing some of the highlights. Remember that thing I said we were going to do earlier with the teeth? We're going to do that a little bit now. A little bit of pink and a little bit of blue on the brush at the same time, just drag down. Now let's turn the lights back on and touch this up a little bit. All right, now look at that. See how fucking gnarly that is? Almost done. Now all we have to do left is after this shit dries a little bit, we're gonna go back in with the pink. Just the pink. Maybe a little bit of blue for fucking texture, but then we're gonna work in those highlights so it pops out at you.
All right, look at how fucking gnarly this is. And I think that we're gonna call that one done. All right, so PTSD and depression are things that people legitimately suffer from. And art is a good way to outlet it. You know, it helps the juices in the brain housing group discombobulate a little bit. However, if you're making something with thoughts of relating to some type of mental issues, with intent to sell, that's something else. That's you preying on the vulnerable for profit. And you're a cunt for doing that. Anyway, this painting's on sale on my website for $0311. You've been you, I've been a cunt. Until next time.